Coca-Cola is a carbonated soft drink. It is produced by the Coca-Cola Company of Atlanta, Georgia, and is often referred to simply as Coke. Originally intended as a patent medicine when it was invented in the late 19th century by John Pemberton, Coca-Cola was bought out by businessman Asher Griggs Candler, whose marketing tactics led Coke to its dominance of the world's soft drink market throughout the 20th century. The name refers to two of its original ingredients, cola nuts, a source of caffeine, and coca leaves. The current formula of Coca-Cola remains a trade secret, although a variety of reported recipes and experimental recreations have been published. The company produces concentrate, which is then sold to licensed Coca-Cola bottlers throughout the world. The bottlers, who hold territorially exclusive contracts with the company, produce finished products in cans and bottles from the concentrate in combination with filtered water and sweeteners. The bottlers then sell, distribute and merchandise Coca-Cola to retail stores, restaurants and vending machines. The Coca-Cola company also sells concentrate for soda fountains to major restaurants and food service distributors. The Coca-Cola company has, on occasion, introduced other cola drinks under the Coke brand name. The most common of these is Diet Coke, with others including caffeine-free Coca-Cola, Diet Coke caffeine-free, Coca-Cola cherry, Coca-Cola zero, Coca-Cola vanilla, and special versions with lemon, lime, or coffee. In 2013, Coke products could be found in over 200 countries worldwide, with consumers downing more than 1.8 billion company beverage servings each day. Based on Interbrand's Best Global Brand Study of 2015, Coca-Cola was the world's third most valuable brand. History 19th century historical origins Confederate Colonel John Pemberton who was wounded in the American Civil War became addicted to morphine and began a quest to find a substitute for the dangerous opiate. The prototype Coca-Cola recipe was formulated at Pemberton's Eagle Drug and Chemical House, a drugstore in Columbus, Georgia. Originally as a coca wine, he may have been inspired by the formidable success of Vane Mariani, a European coca wine. In 1885, Pemberton registered his French wine coca nerve tonic. In 1886, when Atlanta and Fulton County passed prohibition legislation, Pemberton responded by developing Coca-Cola, essentially a non-alcoholic version of French wine coca. The first sales were at Jacobs Pharmacy in Atlanta, Georgia, on May 8, 1886. It was initially sold as a patent medicine for five cents a glass at soda fountains which were popular in the United States at the time due to the belief that carbonated water was good for the health. Pemberton claimed Coca-Cola cured many diseases, including morphine addiction, dyspepsia, neurasthenia, headache, and impotence. Pemberton ran the first advertisement for the beverage on May 29 of the same year in the Atlanta Journal. By 1888, three versions of Coca-Cola, sold by three separate businesses, were on the market. A co-partnership had been formed on January 14, 1888 between Pemberton and four Atlanta businessmen, J.C. Mayfield, A.O. Murphy, C.O. Muller I and E.H. Bloodworth not codified by any signed document. A verbal statement given by Asher Candela years later asserted under testimony that he had acquired a stake in Pemberton's company as early as 1887. John Pemberton declared that the name of Coca-Cola belonged to his son, Charlie, but the other two manufacturers could continue to use the formula. Charlie Pemberton's record of control over the Coca-Cola name was the underlying factor that allowed for him to participate as a major shareholder. In the March 1888 Coca-Cola Company Incorporation filing made in his father's place, Charlie's exclusive control over the Coca-Cola name became a continual thorn in Asher Candler's side. Candler's oldest son, Charles Howard Candler, authored a book in 1950 published by Emory University. In this definitive biography about his father, Candler specifically states, 
On April 14, 1888, the young druggist Asher Griggs Candler purchased a one-third interest in the formula of an almost completely unknown proprietary elixir known as Coca-Cola. The deal was actually between John Pemberton's son Charlie and Walker, Candler and Co., with John Pemberton acting as co-signer for his son. For $50 down and $500 in 30 days, Walker, Candler and Co. obtained all of the one-third interest in the Coca-Cola company that Charlie held, all while Charlie still held on to the name. After the April 14 deal, on April 17, 1888, one half of the Walker Dozier interest shares were acquired by Candler for an additional $750. The Coca-Cola Company in 1892, Candler set out to incorporate a second company, the Coca-Cola Company. When Candler had the earliest records of the Coca-Cola Company burned in 1910, the action was claimed to have been made during a move to new corporation offices around this time. After Candler had gained a better foothold on Coca-Cola in April 1888, he nevertheless was forced to sell the beverage he produced with the recipe he had under the names Yum Yum and Coke. This was while Charlie Pemberton was selling the elixir, although a cruder mixture, under the name of Coca-Cola, all with his father's blessing. After both names failed to catch on for Candela, by the summer of 1888, the Atlanta pharmacist was quite anxious to establish a firmer legal claim to Coca-Cola, and hoped he could force his two competitors, Walker and Dozier, completely out of the business, as well. On August 16, 1888, Dr. John Stith Pemberton suddenly died. Asher G. Candler then sought to move swiftly forward to attain his vision of taking full control of the whole Coca-Cola operation. Charlie Pemberton, an alcoholic, was the one obstacle who unnerved Asher Candler more than anyone else. Candler is said to have quickly maneuvered to purchase the exclusive rights to the name of Coca-Cola from Pemberton's son Charlie right after Dr. Pemberton's death. One of several stories was that Candler bought the title to the name from Charlie's mother for $300, approaching her at Drive Pemberton's funeral. Eventually, Charlie Pemberton was found on June 23, 1894, unconscious, with a stick of opium by his side. Ten days later, Charlie died at Atlanta's Grady Hospital at the age of 40. In Charles Howard Candler's 1950 book about his father, he stated, on August 30, 1888, he, Asher Candler, became sole proprietor of Coca-Cola, a fact which was stated on letterheads, in voice blanks and advertising copy, with this action on August 30, 1888, Candler's sole control became technically all true. Candler had negotiated with Margaret Dozier and her brother Wolf Oak Walker a full payment amounting to $1,000 which all agreed Candela could pay off with a series of notes over a specified time span. By May 1, 1889, Candela was now claiming full ownership of the Coca-Cola beverage, with a total investment outlay by Candela for the drink enterprise over the years amounting to $2,300. In 1914, Margaret Osier, as co-owner of the original Coca-Cola company in 1888, came forward to claim that her signature on the 1888 Coca-Cola Company bill of sale had been forged. Subsequent analysis of certain similar transfer documents had also indicated John Pemberton's signature was most likely a forgery, as well, which some accounts claim was precipitated by his son Charlie. On September 12, 1919, Coca-Cola Co. was purchased by a group of investors for $25 million and reincorporated. The company publicly offered 500,000 shares of the company for $40 a share. In 1986, the Coca-Cola company merged with two of their bottling operators to form Coca-Cola Enterprises Inc. In December 1991, Coca-Cola Enterprises merged with the Johnston Coca-Cola Bottling Group Inc. Origins of Bottling The first 
bottling of Coca-Cola occurred in Vicksburg, Mississippi, at the Beedon Hahn Candy Company in 1891. The proprietor of the bottling works was Joseph A. Beedon Hahn. The original bottles were Beedon Hahn bottles, very different from the much later hobble skirt design of 1915 now so familiar. It was then a few years later that two entrepreneurs from Chattanooga, Tennessee, namely, Benjamin F. Thomas and Joseph B. Whitehead, proposed the idea of bottling and were so persuasive that Candler signed a contract giving them control of the procedure for only one dollar. Candelin never collected his dollar, but in 1899, Chattanooga became the site of the first Coca-Cola bottling company. Candelin remained very content just selling his company's syrup. The loosely termed contract proved to be problematic for the Coca-Cola company for decades to come. Legal matters were not helped by the decision of the bottlers to subcontract to other companies, effectively becoming parent bottlers. This contract specified that bottles would be sold at five each and had no fixed duration, leading to the fixed price of Coca-Cola from 1886 to 1959. 20th century The first outdoor wall advertisement that promoted the Coca-Cola drink was painted in 1894 in Cartersville, Georgia. Cola syrup was sold as an over-the-counter dietary supplement for upset stomach. By the time of its 50th anniversary, the soft drink had reached the status of a national icon in the USA. In 1935, it was certified kosher by Atlanta Rabbi Tobias Geffen, after the company made minor changes in the sourcing of some ingredients. The longest-running commercial Coca-Cola soda fountain anywhere was Atlanta's Fleeman's Pharmacy, which first opened its doors in 1914. Jack Fleeman took over the pharmacy from his father and ran it until 1995, closing it after 81 years. On July 12, 1944, the one billionth gallon of Coca-Cola syrup was manufactured by the Coca-Cola Company. Cans of Coke first appeared in 1955, New Coke on April 23, 1985, Coca-Cola, amid much publicity, attempted to change the formula of the drink with New Coke. Follow-up taste tests revealed most consumers preferred the taste of New Coke to both Coke and Pepsi but Coca-Cola management was unprepared for the public's nostalgia for the old drink, leading to a backlash. The company gave in to protests and returned to a variation of the old formula using high fructose corn syrup instead of cane sugar as the main sweetener. Under the name Coca-Cola Classic, on July 10, 1985, 21st century on July 5, 2005, it was revealed that Coca-Cola would resume operations in Iraq for the first time since the Arab League boycotted the company in 1968. In April 2007, in Canada, the name Coca-Cola Classic was changed back to Coca-Cola. The word classic was removed because New Coke was no longer in production, eliminating the need to differentiate between the two. The formula remained unchanged. In January 2009, Coca-Cola stopped printing the word classic on the labels of one six U.S. fluid ounce bottles sold in parts of the southeastern United States. The change is part of a larger strategy to rejuvenate the product's image. The word classic was removed from all Coca-Cola products by 2011. In November 2009, due to a dispute over wholesale prices of Coca-Cola products, Costco stopped restocking its shelves with Coke and Diet Coke for two months. A separate pouring rights deal in 2013 saw Coke products removed from Costco food courts in favor of Pepsi. Some Costco locations additionally sell imported Coca-Cola from Mexico with cane sugar instead of corn syrup from separate distributors. Coca-Cola introduced the 7.5-0 UNCE Minican in 2009, and on September 22, 2011, the company announced price reductions, asking retailers to sell eight packs for $2.99. That same day, Coca-Cola announced the 12.5-0 UNCE bottle to sell for 89 cents.
A 16-ounce bottle has sold well at 99 cents since being reintroduced, but the price was going up to $1.19. In 2012, Coca-Cola resumed business in Myanmar after 60 years of absence due to U.S.-imposed investment sanctions against the country. Coca-Cola's bottling plant will be located in Yangon and is part of the company's five-year plan and $200 million investment in Myanmar. Coca-Cola with its partners is to invest US$5 billion in its operations in India by 2020. In 2013, it was announced that Coca-Cola Life would be introduced in Argentina that would contain stevia and sugar. In August 2014 the company announced it was forming a long-term partnership with Monster Beverage with the two forging a strategic marketing and distribution alliance and product line swap. As part of the deal Coca-Cola was to acquire a 16.7% stake in Monster for $2.15 billion, with an option to increase it to 25%. Production Ingredients Carbonated water Sugar depending on country of origin Caffeine Phosphoric acid Caramel color. Natural flavorings. A typical can of Coca-Cola contains 38 grams of sugar, 50 milligrams of sodium, 0 grams fat, 0 grams potassium, and 140 calories. On May 5, 2014, Coca-Cola said it is working to remove a controversial ingredient, brominated vegetable oil, from all of its drinks. Formula of Natural Flavorings The exact formula of Coca-Cola's natural flavorings is a trade secret. The original copy of the formula was held in SunTrust Bank's main vault in Atlanta for 86 years. Its predecessor, the trust company, was the underwriter for the Coca-Cola company's initial public offering in 1919. On December 8, 2011, the original secret formula was moved from the vault at Sun Trust Banks to a new vault containing the formula which will be on display for visitors to its World of Coca-Cola Museum in downtown Atlanta. According to Snopes, a popular myth states that only two executives have access to the formula, with each executive having only half the formula. However, several sources state that while Coca-Cola does have a rule restricting access to only two executives, each knows the entire formula and others, in addition to the prescribed duo, have known the formulation process. On February 11, 2011, Ira Glass revealed on his pre-radio show, This American Life, that the secret formula to Coca-Cola had been uncovered in a 1979 newspaper. The formula found basically matched the formula found in Pemberton's diary. Use of stimulants in formula when launched. Coca-Cola's two key ingredients were cocaine and caffeine. The cocaine was derived from the coca leaf and the caffeine from cola nut, leading to the name Coca-Cola. Coca, cocaine Pemberton called for 5 ounces of coca leaf per gallon of syrup, a significant dose, in 1891. Candela claimed his formula contained only a tenth of this amount. Coca-Cola once contained an estimated 9 milligrams of cocaine per glass. In 1903, it was removed. After 1904, instead of using fresh leaves, Coca-Cola started using spent leaves, the leftovers of the cocaine extraction process with trace levels of cocaine. Since then, Coca-Cola uses a cocaine-free coca leaf extract prepared at a Stepan Company plant in Maywood, New Jersey. In the United States, the Stepan Company is the only manufacturing plant authorized by the federal government to import and process the coca plant which it obtains mainly from Peru and, to a lesser extent, Bolivia. Besides producing the coca flavoring agent for Coca-Cola, the Stepan Company extracts cocaine from the coca leaves, which it sells to Malincrod, a street, Lewis, Missouri, pharmaceutical manufacturer that is the only company in the United States licensed to purify cocaine for medicinal use. Long after the syrup had ceased to contain any significant amount of cocaine, in the southeastern U.S., dope remained a common colloquialism for Coca-Cola, and dope wagons were trucks that transported it. 
Cola nuts. Caffeine cola nuts act as a flavoring and the source of caffeine in Coca-Cola. In Britain, for example, the ingredient label states, flavorings, cola nuts contain about 2.0 to 3.5 percent caffeine, are a bitter flavor and are commonly used in cola soft drinks. In 1911, the U.S. government initiated United States v. 40 barrels and 20 kegs of Coca-Cola, hoping to force Coca-Cola to remove caffeine from its formula. The case was decided in favor of Coca-Cola. Subsequently, in 1912, the U.S. Pure Food and Drug Act was amended, adding caffeine to the list of habit-forming and deleterious substances which must be listed on a product label. Coca-Cola contains 34 mg of caffeine per 12 fluid ounces. Franchise production model The actual production and distribution of Coca-Cola follows a franchising model. The Coca-Cola company only produces a syrup concentrate, which it sells to bottlers throughout the world, who hold Coca-Cola franchises for one or more geographical areas. The bottlers produce the final drink by mixing the syrup with filtered water and sweeteners and then carbonate it before putting it in cans and bottles, which the bottlers then sell and distribute to retail stores, vending machines, restaurants and food service distributors. The Coca-Cola company owns minority shares in some of its largest franchises, such as Coca-Cola Enterprises, Coca-Cola Amateur, Coca-Cola Hellenic Bottling Company and Coca-Cola FEMSA, but fully independent bottlers produce almost half of the volume sold in the world. Independent bottlers are allowed to sweeten the drink according to local tastes. The bottling plant in Scorpia, Macedonia, received the 2009 award for Best Bottling Company. Geographic spread. Since it announced its intention to begin distribution in Burma in June 2012, Coca-Cola has been officially available in every country in the world except Cuba and North Korea. However, it is reported to be available in both countries as a grey import. Coca-Cola has been a point of legal discussion in the Middle East. In the early 20th century, a fatwa was created in Egypt to discuss the question of whether Muslims were permitted to drink Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola, the fatwa states. According to the Muslim Hanfite, Shafiite, etc., the rule in Islamic law of forbidding or allowing foods and beverages is based on the presumption that such things are permitted unless it can be shown that they are forbidden on the basis of the Quran. The Muslim jurist stated that, unless the Quran specifically prohibits the consumption of a particular product, it is permissible to consume. Another clause was discussed whereby the same rules apply if a person is unaware of the condition or ingredients of the item in question.